welcome back again to some war game at Red Dragon action. It's going to be 4 vs 4 on the naval map Waterworld, very aptly named as you'll see in just a second. There we go. So yeah, it's basically uh, completely flat. There's literally uh, no land at all in this map. So uh, yeah, basically it's just open ocean. Really, this is more of a um, blue navy deck, a bl blue navy map, should I say, rather than the navies that we have um, competing at the moment. Well, I'm pretty sure some of this stuff would actually be participating in um, blue water navies as well, some of these ships. But in any case, yeah, this is definitely more of a blue navy map, as in um, not blue for naval map, but uh, as in like, you know, like an American carrier group navy. Blue Navy or whatever. In any case, yeah, we've got um, enough babbling. we <laughs> got uh, top versus bottom. North is actually this way, so we'll just uh, spin the old camera around. There we go, and our opponents are going to be uh, packed. Various ships there, and uh, yeah, we're going to, they're going to be playing against us, NATO. So myself, Light Man, Scallywag, Glyphir, Pop versus the Lizard, MJ112, 12, uh, Chit. Tulu 7 the Panther. So I'll be simplifying the names, calling them some abbreviation. And yeah, as you can see, it's going to be a bit of a short game, but it's pretty damn spectacular. Basically put, um, mistakes are going to be made, loads of things are going to blow up. It's going to be spectacular. And we'll just get to the damn game, rather than me just talking it up. So yeah, these are the uh, plans of attack. Our opponents are going to be uh, doing a bit more of a steady push. The plan apparently for us is to do a bit more of a, uh, skewed push towards a particular flank. Sounds good to me. And there we go, we've got beacons being launched all over the place. What's the... Wait a minute, how the... Okay. Wait a minute, how the... Did I just skip over too much of the game there? How the hell did that Super Puma get there? That... And apparently this map... <coughs> Sorry, apparently this map actually does have some lands on it. But... Okay, what? Yeah, okay. Question mark. I think. So wow. Okay, I think someone might have either unintentionally or intentionally been using a glitch there because, yeah, there's no way they would have been able to make it all the way there. I don't think I fast forwarded through that. Are there any other bits of land here? Yeah, that's bizarre. How the. F huh. Okay then. Let's see. What can they see? Yeah, they can see pretty much everything. Well, quite a few things anyway. They're super puma. And they actually reveal themselves by using their um, missiles. Will we do anything about that? Can we even see it? No, we can't. Not now anyway. Hopefully we actually do know that there's something there due to the missiles being used. Huh. Okay, that's an interesting little glitch. Definitely should not happen, but uh, well, there you go. So, yeah, opponents are getting an initial score advantage, but yeah, it is um, very early on in the game, although there's only like another 10 minutes left. Actually, not even 10, there's only like 7 minutes left. Planes coming in to blow some stuff up. Oh shit, did I actually miss that? Uh, shit, I might have. Well, maybe not. Sodomir. Try to take out the ships one at a time. I'm not entirely sure I've actually blown up a ship already that was in front of it. In either case, yeah, they're going to be spamming ships at us, and uh, well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Stay frosty. That's right, stay frosty, people. Hoorah. Hoorah. <laughs> oh, dear me. Dear me, indeed. And uh, here come our own planes. So, yeah, basically NATO's got pretty good uh, anti-ship planes, while Pact has got um, somewhat better ships in general. Although their own planes actually aren't too bad. In fact, we'll be seeing... No, we won't be seeing them being deployed, actually. I guess we'll just watch this um, ships hit whatever the hell that thing was in Lima, destroying it. Might have been a Lura. Wasn't paying attention. Very nicely done indeed. No planes lost, and no planes being deployed by opponents, except these for battles. Which, as you can see, I've only got two anti-ship missiles themselves, although... Yep, they... Well, one will actually make it. And the Oliver Hazard Perry here was actually sideways. Was facing him sideways as well, actually, so he did the uh, maximum amount of damage there. Shaken, but he's not stirred or deterred. So he'll uh, live to fight another day, and he's going to get repaired by the LCU. Anyway, these for bells, as you can see, they do have some uh, radar missiles as well. Semi-active, so... Um, it's not like they have five and get ones, so they need to be aiming towards their targets. Pretty sure. 
SA in either case, so yeah, they need to be pretty sure aiming at the targets to keep the missiles um, tracking because they use command uh, command guidance. But in any case, there we go, Dimension the Strike bro blow against Lima. Now we just need to actually um, capture some more points ourselves. India's no man's land. A whole bunch of Pumas coming in for pop, which would be great if they could be resupplied. Actually, what is he going to do against the Sovereign Men? Not much. Wow. All but one missile getting intercepted, basically. Which is interesting because these guys, they do have a few missiles between them. The thing though. Oh, he's actually going to send the Fabel after him. Anyway, the thing though is that they're not going to be able to be resupplied unless if maybe they land here. I'm not even sure. I mean, one helicopter was landed here, although there might have, might have been a glitch. That, yeah, i never seen that happen before. Probably was a glitch. Now we've got a Super Puma by our opponents with only very good optics, thankfully. But still, he can see quite a bit though. Let's just have a look again. Yeah, you can see a few ships, not too much. But you can definitely see a few of them, and uh, yeah, that's this is basically giving our opponents a pretty unfair vision advantage. The fact that they manage it, presumably that they manage to um, glitch their Super Puma onto that little island. Interesting that this seems to be the only island in the whole map, from what I can tell. Which is actually, I mean, if if um, helicopters can actually land on that, that actually makes the map slightly, uh, slightly unbalanced. Because that basically means one side can land uh, helicopters and the other side can't. <laughs> Interesting. Well, whatever. Where the hell's the sound gone? Oh, there it is. Jesus. Nice little glitch here. In any case, you're yeah, taking out uh, another ship with my planes. But yeah, here we go. SU-27K is coming in. Taking out a couple of moan planes though. And yeah, these are very, very nice. Um, packed planes. Probably just about the best ones that they can get. They only have one anti-ship anti -ship missile. Ah, damn, it's going to go into their other missiles. But basically puts, they do have um, long-ranged fire and forget um, radar missiles to use against planes. And yeah, they do a great job against them as well actually. So uh, not bad. Interceptors. Uh, you can actually get the Tomcats as an NATO for uh, naval forces. But unfortunately, none of us had any Tomcats, which uh, kind of sucks. Basically, we didn't really have too much of an actual reply to the SU-27Ks. Ah, oh, here we go. Here comes one right now, in fact, to uh, launch one single ASM. He's going to be uh, intercepted there. And yeah, he does have a fire and forget missiles. Great range, great HP power. Two seconds reload time. And they don't have to uh, wait to uh, reload either because of fire and forget. Here are more missiles as well. And uh, yeah, he... Uh Ouch, Congo for Popo is probably going to get destroyed along with pretty much everything else. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be sending in the Sturbs to hard counter the Hujans, because apparently they can do that. And at the same time, the yeah, Tornado MFG trying to come in for Scallywag. Really, I don't know why this s some people like sending in things piecemeal like that. I mean, look at this, got a blob basically here. And they got kills, some of them, yeah, actually yeah, a few of them got kills. And I don't know why the hell he thinks one single plane is going to do anything. Even if it is a superior NATO plane. But uh, yeah, in any case, he needs to get his ships the hell out of there. This is another thing, actually, that um, pops up quite a bit in team games. Just a lack of coordination. I mean, we saw that in the last game where opponents didn't time or coordinate their attacks particularly well. And yeah, this is basically what's happening. I mean, I told him to get his ships away, although he probably should have done that earlier himself anyway. Because yeah, we've got the hard counter coming in, the Sturb 90Hs, which are river ships or river boats, gunboats, which basically means they can't be targeted by um, ASMs, which is probably a bit unrealistic, but whatever. I guess they're just too small to be detected or something. But yeah, they do have ATGM missiles, and I think they're the only ship to actually have them. I might be mistaken though. The only one that sees widespread use anyway. And yeah, they've only got 2,800 meters of range, and here we go, here come the SU to some cases as well, and yeah, look at this, our planes, the only one we're even sending that even has any form of real defenses is the Tornado, and it's only got a couple of crappy, crappy, crappy um, infrared missiles, and a little gun on it as well, while these guys have got their fancy radars. So yeah, our opponent's definitely tearing us to shreds, um, yeah, we uh, really needed to... Uh, take better care of our aircraft and uh, yeah, send in some actual air superiority aircraft. With the Tornado MFG, I mean it is technically multi-role, it's only got two infrared missiles, I mean really that's nothing versus freaking um, radar missiles, but in any case, yeah, my Sturbs, I mean look at that, they're tearing through these ships. 
with their ATGMs. They're short ranged, but if we compare them to the Hujians, I mean, look at that, 2625 meters range compared to 2800 meters range. And these guys, ah, oh, damn it. They're SA guided as well, so they do actually have to be stationary in order to keep the missiles in the air, but um, still, these guys are pretty damn good for what they can do. I mean, look at that. Everything here is pretty much dead. These two guys are shaken. This Hujian, I think, is a fresh one. Um, so it's not too shaken or too damaged for that matter, but um, yeah, taking out those monitors is not going to make much of a difference. But yeah, look at that. If my opponent retreat, um, if my ally, should say, if he retreated his um, ships, and if I managed to get in with my Sturbs, then uh, it could have actually made a pretty significant difference there. But uh, oh well, what can you do? Spectacular nonetheless, though. Even with just crappy Sturbs. <laughs> So 780 for me and everyone else, you're not doing too well. Uh, AMG 1-2, yeah, definitely carrying the enemy team quite a bit, that's for sure. But yeah, overall, we needed to take better care of our planes. We needed to um, coordinate quite a bit better as well. And uh, yeah, actually, if we could have glitched a helicopter behind enemy lines, that would have been good too, so we can get free sight. But oh well, that's not a, a usual tactic, to say the least. In fact, it shouldn't really be allowed, but anyway. It happens, and it happens nonetheless. Got video evidence of that. Interesting game, though. It's an interesting game. I mean, if we could have coordinated a bit better. And oh, right. <laughs> this is from the uh, yeah, because yeah, that's what I'm pressing in order to um change the uh, recording and all that. But in any case, yeah, that's it. I shall see you all next time.